they would they can see anything. They don't respect a woman and nothing like that. But they dealt with all that. Competition. Then we it was like groping in the dark. We had just no idea how to go about this. And uh, we started having events at the tree. We thought we said we have to gather people there. Our main interest was to take people there and show them the values. So they know that how beautiful they are and how precious they are. The banyan is a keystone species. So that means every banyan tree is an ecosystem by itself. And many, many, many creatures depend on a banyan for their survival. So if you remove one banyan tree, a whole lot of species, birds, butterflies, moths, snakes, lots of, lots of species, they will go extinct. They will not be able to survive. So that is the reason a banyan is called a keystone species. And another very, very unique thing about a banyan is its relationship, symbiotic relationship with a banyan fig wasp, which is a very, very tiny wasp that you can barely see with your eye. So if that wasp is not there, the banyan will not be there. So it's a very unique symbiotic relationship. In every respect, the banyan is a fantastic tree. And it is the national tree of India. And as someone said, everyone reveres the banyan. No one cuts down a banyan tree except the government. <laughs> so this is something we also realized and we said, no, 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 we have to do something about it. And then, okay, so we started having events. Nothing was the dilemma we had. So we met with many people, lawyers, uh, you know, us, beneficiaries, people who know. So one of the greatest things about our campaign is that the number of people that who worked on this all have different skills. And all are very, uh, you know, professionals and intelligent people, sensitive people, capable of doing research. So everything we did, so that I think has been a very big strength for us. And I think Natasha could talk about how we fight the case. Uh, see, for the first uh, quite a few months, we were looking at outreach, we were looking at talking to people. Um, Satna, Asya, and Kobita have met uh, practically everybody in the city, and a lot of photographs are there in the exhibition. Uh, but uh, in September 2021, we realized that the project has not tendered out. So once the tenders have been published, uh, none of this is going to matter. Talking to NHI after the tender is out is pointless. Um, we continued doing that, but that's when we realized one of the laws to protect trees which are outside of forest. Among humans, this is the caste system. Among trees, these are the lower castes and they don't have rights as far as um, the law goes. Which is why, like I mentioned earlier, we have to really fight on this technicality of you have not, you know, in the process of cutting down a tree which you, which anybody can cut down with the process, you have not done these things. So at least slow them down. Because if a tender is awarded, then obviously the contractor wants to get working immediately. And if there is a, a court a case, they can't continue with it. So it's in a way a delaying tactic. And a lot of people told us to just delay them until they give up and say it's not worth it, we just build another order. We are really at that stage right now with the with, with the judgment. Uh, it is a delay, but it hopefully will be a significant delay and people will look at something else. So to come back to it, yes, we filed with uh, the NGT. The reason we filed with the NGT was also that we thought it would fit in with the, you know, we, looked, we looked at past judgments and we realized NGT is probably where we will get a better hearing. We also found a fantastic lawyer in Chennai, who, which is where the southern bench is. So that is where we filed. And for literally two years, um, NGT, um, NHAI undervalued us completely. Uh, you know, there would be a day they would not turn up, or they will. If you're supposed to file a response sufficiently before the date of the hearing, so the other person can respond. NHAI would invariably file at 5.30 the day before the hearing. What NHAI did not realize is that all of us have day jobs. So we anyway work after 5.30 only. So it would be uh, 10.30 or 11 at night, they job 
we are sitting right here, the HR's wife, without whom we couldn't have done anything, we would literally be talking at 9.30 and 10 o'clock in the night of, okay, how do we find this response? NHAI also did not realize that we are not a bunch of activists who are armchair activists, we call that, but we have a lot of data with us. Uh, Kobe, again, who's sitting here, and you'll see her in the next session, has done a humongous amount of work around the flora and fauna on that stretch. We have geotagged every single banyan. It took us 200 plus hours to do it, but every single banyan has its coordinates, its height, its, its girth, its photograph. So when NHAI says something as about 27% have a girth over 10 feet, so you know, we did not even get into defining insignificant because everyone knows what 5 feet Probably it was just this underestimation of us and the fact that NHI didn't realize that we were actually running a data-driven